So today we're going to be exposing the 1924 playbook that we believe Michael Saylor might be using today in a quest to become the world's richest man. So this playbook was originally created by Germany's richest man in 1924 during their hyperinflation. So who is this mystery man who created this 1924 playbook? Who is Hugo Steins? How did he get the nickname of the inflation king way back in the 1920s? And what does this playbook tell us about what Michael Saylor is going to do next? So the entire globe's economy was plunged into crisis following the conclusion of World War One, And at the same time that America was experiencing the quiet depression in the early 1920s, Germany was going through the exact opposite. They went through one of the most historic and well-documented hyperinflations in human history. We can see from this chart here that the German mark went from zero to a trillion in pretty much under seven years. And this meant that most people People lost absolutely everything during this hyperinflation, but not Hugo Steins. He found a way to actually surf the wave of hyperinflation. Hugo Steins is now known as the inflation king of Germany, and that was all because of how he rode that wave of hyperinflation in the early 1920s. So this man owned a coal business. He was a wealthy individual, just wealthy, okay, just a little bit above average, but in under five years, he became the world's richest man, and he did this because he saw the warning signs of hyperinflation. So Hugo noticed that inflation was getting pretty bad, and he thought that it it was going to get even worse. So what he did was he actually took out an enormous amount of debt and a number of loans against his family owned coal business to go out there and buy even more businesses. But Hugo didn't just buy businesses. He also bought gold. He also bought real estate. He bought anything hard and tangible that he could get his hands on with these, you know, cheap loans and cheap debt that he was securing in the German mark. So Hugo employed this strategy during 1921, 22, 23, and by the time 1924 rolled around, Hugo owned over one sixth of all of the industries in Germany. Okay, he was Germany's richest man, and he was able to pay back all of the very small loans that he took out just a couple of years prior with the hyperinflated German mark. He actually used foreign currencies as a medium of exchange during this very, very volatile era of time in Germany. So where does Michael Saylor fit into this picture? Well, Michael looks to be doing something very similar exactly 100 years after Hugo Steins employed this very interesting tactic to kind of route around inflation, okay? We all know that Michael Saylor has publicly said this about fiat currency. And that's an insight I had between April 1st and June. Then I realized I'm on a melting ice cube of $500 million worth of money. The purchasing power is dwindling at 10% to 20% a year. I have to do something. And then it's becoming a question of what are you going to do? He calls fiat currency a melting ice cube. So like Hugo Steins, he understands the need to get out of fiat. But the really important comparison we want to draw is the fact that Michael Saylor not only began to convert his entire company's treasury into Bitcoin in 2020, but he went one step further. Okay, He employed the Hugo Steins playbook and he decided to take out debt in fiat to go out there and buy hard assets like Bitcoin. So we can see here in March 2022, Michael took out over $200 million as a loan to go out there and buy more Bitcoin. Now, this chart is really, really cool because it shows you something very, very important that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. It showed that Michael actually didn't just buy Bitcoin once. He dollar cost averaged into his position. So on the blue, that is actually the price of Bitcoin. And those green dots uh, represent every single time that Michael Saylor bought a little bit of Bitcoin. So what Michael did was he dollar cost average into his position of Bitcoin. So he got an average cost price. And despite what many critics were saying about Michael Saylor's strategy, when the price of Bitcoin was going down in 2022, Michael recently paid off one of these loans that he took out to buy the Bitcoin, just like what Hugo Steins did in 1923 and 1924.
So we can see here from this headline, March 2023, exactly one year after he took that loan out, Michael Saylor has paid back his loan that he got from Silvergate. And obviously this is very important because many mainstream critics came out and they said there's no way Michael's going to pay back his debt. He's going to go bankrupt. This is a terrible bet. Let's look at this headline right here. We can see Fortune took a massive swing at Michael Saylor, saying he lost $6 billion in a day and his Bitcoin bet is going to end up being even worse than that. But let's remember, Michael Saylor is now billions of dollars in profit today as Bitcoin is back in the $40,000 range. And Michael isn't sitting back on a yacht, you know, sipping champagne, enjoying his paper profits. He just came out recently and he said, guess what? I'm sitting on around $216 million of shares of my own company. I'm going to sell all those and buy more Bitcoin. Despite Michael's success over the past four years, the mainstream media still is trying to warn people from doing the same thing. They're still questioning Michael Saylor at every chance they get. So after two years of taunts and negative headlines, Michael Saylor appears to be winning, He's currently sitting on nearly 1% of the total Bitcoin supply. So how do the lessons from Hugo Steins and Michael Saylor apply to us, the little guy? Okay, we are certainly not advising you to go out there and get debt and buy some Bitcoin. Okay, again, this is not financial advice, but a key lesson we can take from this lesson of uh, inflation in the 2020s and hyperinflation in the 1920s is that converting your weaker currency into a stronger currency is always a great idea. And something else you need to be cognizant of is always be prepared for volatility. Now, again, we're not saying that you're going to see hyperinflation in the 2020s. Despite the world seeing the highest levels of inflation that we've seen in over 50 years, and despite countries like Argentina even seeing 252% inflation in 2023, we are not saying for sure that we're going to see hyperinflation. But even if we do see higher inflation, please be prepared for volatility. For example, let's take a look at this chart of the German mark priced against gold during this 1920s hyperinflation when Hugo went out there and made bank, okay? Many people look back at this 1920s hyperinflation in Germany with a little bit of hindsight and they say, I could have made an absolute killing trading this hyperinflation of the German mark. Look how simple it would have been. I should have just gone out there and bought a leveraged gold contract in, say, 19. 20 and just held that for five years. Now, let's be really conservative and have a look at that hypothetical scenario. Imagine you opened a 2x leverage long on the price of gold in 1918. Again, 2x leverage, very conservative compared to what many of our friends in the crypto space do with their 20 and 100x leverage longs over on Binance. But let's say you had a 2x leverage long. Well, you would have actually got wiped out and liquidated on over eight occasions in only five years. And that is because of this chart right here. We can see that the price of gold actually had a correction of over 50% on eight different occasions in the early 1920s. So even if you were very conservative with a 2X leverage long on the price of gold, you would have got liquidated on eight occasions. So this teaches you, again, do not trade with leverage. Do not trust others to trade with leverage. If you're holding Bitcoin on an exchange, you might not know it, but your friend holding your you know, Bitcoin for you, they're probably out there on the back end trading with leverage, trying to collect you some yield. So again, take custody of your Bitcoin. And it never hurts to be prepared for a little bit of volatility, especially when you have some people in the Bitcoin space talking about the potential of a super cycle in 2025. So if you want to learn a little bit more about a potential super cycle in 2025 that could make the volatility in the 1920s German hyperinflation look tame, you might want to check out the recent video we filmed on that topic. I'm going to slap a link on screen that's going to Take you straight to that video right about there and with all that said let us know in the comments down below what you thought of today's video what do you think of hugo steins and michael saylor we want to know 